welcome to our second part of the five lecture sequence on carpet strategy. Uh, the topic in this lecture is vertical integration. There are trade-offs between making, which is vertical integration, and buying, where you're just using the market. So it's uh, useful to, to run through these trade-offs. Um, the benefits of using markets uh, really have to do with the uh, magical properties of the invisible hand which, uh, uh, which, which Adam Smith talks about. Um, the invisible hand of prices, have you learned this in Econ 101 or whatever, uh, the invisible hand of prices uh, does a really efficient job of allocating resources in commodity markets. Uh, take for example salt. Profit-seeking suppliers of salt are very happy to supply uh, an extra pound of salt if the benefit of doing so, the benefit is measured by the price, uh, covers their production cost. Millions of suppliers and distributors make these cost-benefit calculations all the time without us being aware of it, without us having to uh, you know, tell people what we want, uh, without having a central planner who tells all these companies what to do. Uh, they all get information from the price signal, they have high-powered incentives, they make money uh, if uh, they make the right decisions, and the system just works fine. So if you want uh, um, to buy salt, if you want uh, feel like some apples, you don't have to vertically integrate it, uh, you don't have to own your own farms, you you just go to the store and magically it all just appears there. So. In, in a lot of markets, uh, in a, it, it really doesn't make sense to vertically integrate. The market just works so much better. Uh, this does not mean that markets work perfectly or work for everything, because if it did, there would be no such thing as a firm. Everything would be contracts uh, between uh, individuals. Uh, so the reason we have firms, the, the, the reason we don't rely on the market for everything is that there are transaction costs. Uh, these are, uh, it, it's sometimes costly to rely on markets uh, to serve your needs. So when firms have, and this, is, this becomes especially problematic, when firms need goods or services that involve what are called specific investments. Specific investments are investments uh, that have limited value in alternate uses. So uh, it's the classic example of that is General Motors uh, ha used to get um, the car body from an independent company called Fisher. and. Uh, the Fisher had to make a lot of investment in dyes and other fabrication equipment, which was very specialized for making bodies for General Motors. Uh, this is an example of a specific investment because if, um, if General Motors didn't buy body parts from them, Fisher really could not supply Ford or Chrysler or anyone else there is a specificity in the relationship between General Motors and Fisher. Uh, so if, uh, if things changed, if the price of raw materials changed or something else happened, uh, then each time you'd have to go back and recraft the contract uh, between these two companies. And it is costly to do so because each party kind of distrusts the other and wonders if uh, you know they are getting uh, um, opportunistically held up by their uh, transacting partner. 
Um, so that, that's an example of when specific investments can uh, lead to a market failure. Um, another problem, and this is uh, sort of related, market power, if you have a lot of suppliers, then they don't have market power over you, right? But if you have relatively few suppliers, or if you had relatively few distributors, then they might have market power over you. They might be able to hold you up. Uh, there might be, there might not be a market uh, failure as such, uh, but they might have excessive market power, and that's a drawback. So if you're relying entirely on the market, you could find yourself in trouble. Uh, so what's the solution? Solution, you could make it yourself. There's a market failure. Uh, you want to get more market power. You could just make it yourself. So what are the benefits of doing so? You have control. You have authority. Uh, you are able to coordinate things a lot tighter than you would if you had to rely on the market. So those are the benefits of, of making things in-house, of vertical integration. But there are challenges, and the challenges have to do with creeping bureaucracy, there are agency costs. You cannot uh, replicate the high-powered incentives that you have in markets inside the firm. It's a lot more challenging to do that. Right? Uh, so if it becomes too costly to make things in the firm uh, because of bureaucracy and agency costs, then you might just want to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, subcontract this out because the market is going to give me these, these benefits, right? So you have this trade-offs between making versus buying. Uh, now making and buying are two uh, extreme ends of a spectrum, really. So you, when you buy bananas, potatoes, or something like apples, you're using spot market exchange. You go uh, uh, to uh, the store and you just buy whatever you need. You don't have any relationship as such. Um, but you might you might go an extra step and have long-term contracts with some suppliers, which are a little more involved than just spot markets. You could um, you you could have an alliance, which is more explicit than just a series of long-term contracts. Um, uh, and alliances come in two flavors, one where you don't exchange equity and one where you can have an equity exchange. And finally, you could do a, a, a joint venture uh, where um, the, the two entities come together in a separate entity, which is called a joint venture. Or you could just fold things inside. This is the opposite extreme, vertical integration, where you just do everything in-house. Right. Um, so it's not just uh, make versus buy, but there are lots of transactions in between that could also serve this um, relationship between a buyer and a supplier, between a company and its distributor. So what are the dis decision steps? How, how do you go from, how do you, how do you make the decision of whether to make versus buy? Um, let's disaggregate the industry value chain. So industry value chain involves uh, raw materials and components and finished goods and you get this and then you distribute it through uh, the distributor takes it to the retailers and finally it goes to the ultimate uh, customer and you disaggregate the chain and you're trying to figure out uh, what should I do in-house, hmm? what should I vertically integrate and what activities uh, should I just leave to the market. The, the golden rule is in general uh, markets are better, well, not perfect, but markets are, are better. So when in doubt, a market transaction might be better. But let's, let's just walk through this framework here. Uh, it, it's like a decision tree. So the first question you ask yourself is, do I have a competitive advantage in, in doing this? So, so what we 
see a lot of, uh, and we've seen this for uh, a decade or so, is this concept of a, of a virtual corporation. Uh, this is based on the idea that a firm should only engage in activities uh, where it has a competitive advantage. And for everything else, subcontract. Don't do this yourself. Let the market take care of it. Uh, we've talked briefly of this Indian telecom company called Bharti Airtel, which argues that the, their, their core competency, their competitive advantage, is in the customer relationship. They, they are good at attracting new customers, at retaining them, by providing them good service, by providing them attractive contracts. All of the other stuff, managing the network, managing the billing and so on, are, according to Bharti Airtel, uh, not their core competency. And they would much rather the market did that. So they have uh, um, long-term contracts, really more of a strategic alliance, I think, uh, with companies like Siemens and Nortel and uh, information technology companies which take care of all these other activities uh, in which they don't have a competitive advantage. Right? Um, other examples of that, um, Microsoft and Intel. Uh, Microsoft is focused on operating software, on uh, application software. Intel is focused on making uh, chips, the, the hardware for the computer. Uh, both these companies have uh, chosen not to vertically integrate into manufacturing computers. That's done by independent computer manufacturers. Uh, the idea is, uh, you know, both Microsoft and Intel are looking at this and saying, you know, my competitive advantage is in software or my competitive advantage is hardware, uh, the, the, the chips, and the other stuff I'm going to let other companies do. It's actually going to work out more efficiently for me. And for many years this was touted as the best way of selling computers. Made a lot of sense. Apple's model is different. Apple vertically integrates into both hardware and software. They, they don't make their chips, but they have a much tighter integration uh, across you know the product design itself so uh, unlike a microsoft where uh, a company like dell and lenovo and uh, sony and so on would make computers that are a little different uh, using the same software apples is everything is done by them the design the hardware, how everything is put together is done by them. And Apple sees that as their competitive advantage. Right? Uh, look at Google. Google had more of a, a model where they said, we just do um, software and we we'll let other companies design the phone. So they had contracts with uh, uh, Mo Motorola and uh, HTC and Samsung and so on, all of which make uh, phones based on the Android standard. And very recently, um, Mo Google has chosen to acquire uh, Motorola. So maybe this has to do with competing with Apple, which has a more integrated model. All of these issues that we are talking about relate to what do you define as your competitive advantage. If you feel you have a competitive advantage in doing something, it might make sense to do that in-house, to manage the relationship uh, within the firm hierarchy. So now you think, you know, I don't have a competitive advantage, so what do I do? Well, you ask the next question then. So I don't want to do it in-house because I don't have a competitive advantage in that. Then the question you're asking is, is there a market failure? We talked about General Motors and uh, Fisher Body. I don't think General Motors acquired Fisher Body. You know, this happened over 50, 60 years ago. I don't think GM acquired Fisher Body because they felt they had a special competitive advantage in using those dyes. It was more an example of a market failure. 
uh, the textbook chapter I have you read talks about another example of uh, three companies that share assets that are specific. For example, there's a pharmaceutical company. It has a patent for a new arthritis drug. There's another biotech company which specializes in manufacturing. It has manufacturing facility which is especially suited to making such drugs. And there is a distribution company uh, which has a very finely developed distribution channel for rheumatologists. If you put all these assets together within the firm, within one firm, it has a lot more value than if these were separate entities because they are all you know, specific. If you, if you put them together, coordinate them together, they would work better. Uh, and if you just let the market uh, transaction figure this out, you might find it very hard to, to strike the right contract uh, which uh, uh, allows for uh, the, the coordination that's needed. Right? So markets might fail there and if you believe there is, it's going to be challenging to use the market because uh, you might have to keep coming back to renegotiate terms, there are these transaction costs because of specificity then you might choose to say, well, you know, there's market failure. I uh, don't have a competitive advantage here, but I'm going to form a, uh, um, you know, I'm going to vertically integrate all these activities to it within the firm. Okay, so what if there's no market failure? Then you ask one more question. Is there a big need for coordination? Uh, in a way, this goes with market failure. There's a very great need for coordination you might not trust the market uh, transaction to provide enough coordination. Part of my rationale for, those, for that uh, pharmaceutical company and the biotech manufacturing and the distribution channel is uh, uh, maybe it's not so much a market failure as just a need for much tighter coordination which is done better in-house. Right? Because of the need for coordination uh, you might say you know I'm uh, uh, I'm just uh, uh, going to do this uh, in-house uh, but there isn't an arrow going from here to firm hierarchy directly it says well wait a minute let's ask one more question also which is could there be incentive problems now you know that within a firm there can be potential incentive problems so uh, markets do a better job of um, aligning incentives uh, you you see this a lot in franchise stores. So Subway doesn't own its stores. They give them out for franchise. Starbucks, on the other hand, owns a lot of its stores. It has fewer franchises. So uh, what's going on here? I guess Starbucks feels there's much more of a coordination need than an incentive problem. Right? Uh, and so they go for a hierarchy and uh, um, Subway believes that uh, there is uh, more of an incentive problem they can specify uh, uh, in a contract mostly what they need and use a market exchange use use franchised stores so this this trade-off between do I need to coordinate a lot do I need tighter incentives can drive many decisions Zara is a, is a company I've heard you guys mention uh, in class uh, and outside uh, Zara is uh, a lot more uh, vertically integrated compared to some of its competitors and part of the reason for that is you know they, they they, they're much more responsive to changes in fashion. So it's a coordination need that dominates there. That's why they have more company-owned stores, more company-owned factories. Right? Uh, with other stores, they see this as more of a, uh, well, uh, you, you have better incentives when you uh, separate these uh, transactions out. Um, uh, I, I hope that somewhat extended uh, discussion was helpful in seeing why firms differ so much in the choices they make between make versus buy and kind of walking through a framework uh, which tells you what questions to ask uh, what are some issues that become important in figuring out whether or not you should uh, vertically integrate okay implementation challenges 
we know how implementation works when you organize all activities within the firm you know if you're making automation consulting you you can figure out it's it's not easy but you you know what choices you're making with implementation and if you're buying there's not a whole lot of implementation you just uh, say i want so many uh, apples and you go to the store and you buy them right? so there's there's not much of a coordination there's not much of an organizational structure and controls that you need uh, but the challenge comes in for the in between uh, alliances because uh, if you if you're not using the market and you're not doing it within the firm uh, then you have a somewhat closer relationship but you don't have as much control uh, so you have to figure out how you are going to implement that um, uh, with the right beliefs and boundaries, uh, interactive system, a diagnostic control system. So how are you going to structure uh, the roles and responsibilities uh, so that uh, a year from now, two years from now, you suddenly don't find yourself uh, saying, oh, you know, these guys are not doing what they're supposed to do and I don't have good alternatives, so I'm having all these problems. Well. Uh, you could alleviate, mitigate some of these problems by structuring this right, uh, by clearly specifying and having means to measure performance. So you you should you should have clear goals about what performance targets that you want to meet. What kind of quality are you looking for? What kind of delivery terms are you looking for? Uh, how are disputes related to pricing? because prices will change over time, demand will change over time, uh, what kind of uh, um, systems do you have to respond to those sorts of things so that you can adapt as your strategy evolves over time. Uh, how are you going to align incentives um, given this closer relationship? Uh, as you can imagine, uh, doing this is uh, not always easy. It's, it's quite challenging and uh, if we have an opportunity we should discuss this more in class. Uh, that concludes our discussion on vertical integration.